Good morning and welcome to today's broadcast. Again, we've got Apostle Clay and Susan Nash with us. My beautiful bride Cameron and I, we welcome you today. We are excited about this week's broadcast because we're talking about first fruits giving, releasing increase into your life. I can assure you this beautiful lady sitting next to me has lived this story in times of plenty and in times of little. And God is a God of restoration, isn't he, sweetheart? I believe there are people out there right now that you need a miracle. You need a financial miracle. This lady is a living miracle. I'm a living miracle. We all have seen God cancel yes. debt. Yes. We've seen God bring supernatural increase. Yes. But we had to, by faith, unlock that miracle by letting go of what was in our hand and our possession. So I want Cameron to pray. I want her to ask God for a a breaker anointing today to break debt, cancel debt, release the supernatural transfer of wealth, and give you the faith and the trust to do what God's asking you to do. Sweetheart, will you pray? Lord, we give you such honor today for being in your presence. We give you such honor for everything you've done for us and what you will continue to do for us. Father, for those out there who are not in a position right now to feel very blessed at all. They're struggling, they're hurting, they're afraid. Father, I just right now reach out and I say, trust in the one who created you. Trust in the one who sent his son to die for you so that all of your troubles could be washed away, not just your sin, but all of your trouble, your worry, your doubt, your fear. Father, just allow that mother out there who's raising children on her own, she has no fear. Her father owns a cattle on a thousand hills, and he's not a stingy father. Father, I ask that you will just give each one of these people out there today who are maybe um, not sure how this works. They're a little confused. They've got some religious bondage that's keeping them confused and muddled. Just have it, just clear it up for them, Lord. Give, give us the words that we need to say that will just push that little trigger in their brain, and they're like, oh, I now understand. I now understand what they're talking about. I get this. Father, I ask that you'll just prepare the hearts out there for those that need to hear from you today, that you'll just give us an anointing to, to deliver the message that you'd have us to. And Father, I just ask now for that transfer of wealth to be released, and the Lord rebuke whatever is keeping it yes. tied up. <clears throat> yes, in Jesus' and name. And that it come when you want it to come. Mm -hmm to those who will use it as kingdom dwellers. And Father, I'm going to already confess that it's here. Yes. And that by the time this broadcast comes, we can just already be living in that. Yes. And Father, I'm just going to go ahead and say that I need you to give us the wisdom to know how to spend it in your kingdom. Yes. To give us those that you need to help. Put them in our path. Yes. Mm -hmm. Put, tell us which way to go, Father. In your name, we pray all these things. Amen. Amen. You know, Jesse Duplantis, one of the great teachers on giving, and uh, I remember he said one time in the church, he came and preached for us, and he said, here's the question of all questions. Do you possess your possessions, or do your possessions possess you? And he said, one of the reasons why I'm blessed, abundantly blessed, is because I view money as just a tool a tool to preach the gospel to the world, a tool to advance God's kingdom. And if you're not moved by money, but you're moved by the spirit in the kingdom, God can trust you. And here's the test. And it's been the test in all of our lives. When we were broke, when we were in debt, when we were raising children in ministry, and boy, how hard is that financially? Could God trust us with a little because if we're faithful with a little, mm -hmm. he promises to give much. Now, we're going to break down for you the difference between tithing mm -hmm. and the three tithes that are actually in the Hebrew Bible and the Hebrew understanding. We're going to talk about teruma, first fruits, and the differences. And I know Apostle Nash is, is prepared to do that. So, Clay, share with them the difference between tithing and, okay. and first fruits. The tithe is the first 10% of your increase, of your, uh, your, your income. In other words, tithing is in relationship to what you already have. First fruits is in relationship to what God wants 
you to have. Mm, he good. wants you to have. The, where I discovered in, in my study, a non-covenant Jew, when it came time for harvest, they would go and harvest uh, wheat, barley, like that, and they would take it home, and they would wrap it in a cloth. They'd put it to where moisture couldn't get to it, moss couldn't get to it. It could not be damaged because that 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 portion of the harvest represented the ability to plant another crop. Right. But if they were a covenant Israelite, a covenant Jew. They would take it and bring it as a, a shiva, a wave offering to the priest because what they were saying, I'm not going to trust my ability to have seed for another crop. I'm going to trust your ability to give me seed for the next planting, and they would give it to the Lord. Uh, in agronomy, the first seed that ripens, the first part of the harvest, it, which is which is the first fruit is the healthiest seed. It used to be. It's changed a lot here in Arkansas. But you know we would go and harvest that first part of the soybeans when they got with it. Now our seed is so hybrid these days. It's not that way. It's changed. But that's the way it was. We would harvest it. We'd put it up in a grain bin. We'd run it through a cleaner. We would and then we sometimes we sack it. Sometimes we wouldn't. We kept it bulk. But we had seed to plant another crop. But the next thing is that your tithe relates to what you make. The first fruits re, uh, relates to what God wants you to make. The tithing relates to past productivity. First fruits relates to future productivity. I love what Cameron said. You know, I, I tell people you can have a a hundred thousand dollar heart of faith and and a and a and a thousand dollar ability to, to plant sacrificially in first fruits. Another one is tithing represents our present need, but first fruits represents the increase over the next 12 months. God wants to increase yes, you. Yes, he does. He, he's more, as it, it, Susan said, he's more interested in blessing and increasing you than probably you are in seeing mm -hmm, the increase right. and being blessed. It's just how, how that God works. But we have to see this. From that covenant Jew or that covenant Israelite, they put their their total, they they trusted God and they watched God bring the increase to them. Another thing about uh, uh, tithing and first fruit, you know, the tithe belongs to God. And I've already said that, but it entitles you to be able to plant seed. There are some people that try to operate in first fruits, but they've never given the tithe to the Lord, and it, it's stolen. Yeah, about the tithe, this is what the Lord showed me. When the Word says uh, the tithe belongs to me, and, the, and it says that the earth belongs to the Lord, the heavens and the earth, they all belong to the Lord. So if you, you have to start your financial giving with the tithe, and it's like a landlord with farming. If you want to uh, operate the ground and care for the ground and cause it to produce, you have to pay the landlord his rent. Mm -hmm. And so God says, I, all I'm asking for you is 10%. Mm -hmm. you know, so if you'll, if you'll give the 10%, then you have possession yes. to work to, to cause the harvest to come from the ground. Right. And you know what? I would much rather live on a blessed 90% than a cursed 100%. That's a fact. That's good. Absolutely. Yeah, my dad taught me as a little boy. He said, son, God can always do a lot more with the 90% left over than you'll ever do with 100%. And he uh, was right. So true. Yeah, okay. go ahead. Are you finished? Go ahead. Yeah, no, I'm... I'm well, you know, when we're talking about tithing first fruits, offerings, <clears throat> I want you to, let, let me share with you first fruits, because this is a new concept for most people, and in the Hebrew culture, at the three feasts, the Hebrew male would come and bring a heave offering, a wave offering of the barley, we're at Passover, 
So they would bring the first fruits of the crop. How did that take place? The the uh, the priest would go to the farmer, and the farmer would request that the priest come, the rabbi would come, and they would say, I need you to perform what in Hebrew is called the bickering, and it was the measurement of the crop. And very simply put, I, I, I think about our culture and our way of farming. So the pastor would say to the farmer, "What? how many bushels of rice are you praying for on this Come on. thousand acres? And uh, I never thought it would happen in my lifetime as a boy, but nowadays I, I have people I grew up with and they've, laser planed all their rice fields and there's no more levees and they have a way to really ramp up and they're getting 200 bushels of rice acre, yes. which is amazing. That's mind boggling. And so the farmer would say to the pastor, the farmer would say to the rabbi, I'm believing God for 200 bushels an acre. Mm-hmm. And so they would come into covenant that the first heads of rice in their culture, the first heads of barley would belong to the priest and the priest family. Listen, Nehemiah said very clearly as they were rebuilding the city, as they were going to restore the temple, as they were going to begin to cause the land to prosper after Babylonian captivity, he said, and the same time some were appointed, Nehemiah 12, 44, over the rooms of the storehouse for offerings, first fruits, and the tithes, plural, to gather them from the fields and the cities so that these portions specified by the law would be for the priests and the Levites. For Judah rejoiced over the priests and the Levites who ministered. In Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 3, he said, verse 4, the, he said, the first fruits of your grain and your new wine and your oil and the first fruits of the fleece of your sheep you shall give to the priest. That was at Tabernacles in the fall. So in this culture, they would take the first portion. And let me just say that also, if you read about even when they dedicated the temple, Solomon was always giving the male, the premium male sheep, the premium male goat, the premium male bull. Yes. You know why he was giving the male? Because that was the seed. The male was the seed. And, you know, I'm not a farmer. For a brief period of time, my dad had a chicken farm and some cows and so forth. But I can tell you that you you spent more money and you invested more in your bull than you did in your heifers. Yes. Because that seed is what was going to reproduce the, the best on. quality cow. Yes. The life was in the seed. Mm-hmm. Well, God asked for the source of your seed. The seed is the source of life and increase. So you would see them offer the best lamb, the male lamb without spot or blemish because they were by faith trusting God. If I give your kingdom the source of my seed, then you're going to take my second best and do more with that than I can do. So first fruits guarantees increase. Now, because why, why is that? Because the first fruit giving is given to the authority that feeds you the word of God in Nehemiah chapter 10. Again, verse 36, he says, bring the first fruits of your ground of the tree and year by year to the house of the Lord. Verse 37, to the priests who ministers on behalf of God. So in the Hebrew culture, they would bring the first portion of that harvest, as Clay mentioned, which was the best seed for the next season. Yes. And they would wave it before the Lord. Here they would come to worship at the temple, and they're bringing these sheaves of barley at Passover, waving them. The priest would take them. They would make bread out of them, and they would come out before the Lord, and they would wave the bread before the Lord. And here's what they said. Because this man has trusted you with the best and the first, We put a demand on heaven's authority that his crop cannot fail. There can be no bugs. There can be no disease. There can be no hailstorms. There can be no hurricanes, earthquakes, tornadoes. This crop is guaranteed to produce the increase that he's believing for because he trusted you by feeding those who teach and preach the word. Now I have to say to you, so when, when, 
you're in a position as we are in the period of a year's time, we sow Taruma into um, uh, Clay and Susan Nash in, in their ministry, Dr. Ron Phillips, who's our, been our primary apostle for years, Dutch Sheets. We sow Taruma in there because we know it guarantees increase. And when I first started doing this in 2011, Dwayne Miller Ministries was brand new, had just been formed. And I'm telling you that the ministry's income increased by 500% in one year. Because God has to honor that seed yes, covenant. He does. And many of you would say, well, what is Taruma? In the Hebrew culture, in that barley field, it is 1.7 to 2.5% of the crop. And let me simplify that for you. If you make $1,000 a month, it's $25. If you make $1,000 a week, if you make $10,000 a month, it's $250. Now think about that. You're giving God 2.5% of what he's blessed you with. And by faith, believing for the increase on that, which is exponentially supernatural. God said in Proverbs that if you honor God with the first fruits, that your barns will be filled and your yes. vats will overflow. Yes. Hear me. Wherever, wherever you're fed the word, and, and believe me, most churches and most church cultures don't practice this, they don't yeah. teach this, and they don't believe this. Many of you would go to your pastor and, and offer to do this, and he'd be like, I don't know what you're talking about. I did that. Do what? <laughs> you did that. <laughs> and so, but I promise you, and I'm not saying this for self-serving purposes, but if, if you uh, are at home, and we feed you the word on this broadcast daily, and, and we are a primary source of you being taught the word, you should sow Taruma into Dwayne Miller Ministries. And I'm not saying that to serve us. It might be that VTN as a whole is your source. We'll sow it into VTN. You may watch uh, uh, Clay Nash in his uh, broadcast, and his podcast, and you may get on that prayer call every day, and that's the source of life for you. We'll sow it into Clay Nash Ministries. But that seed, I've, I've proven to you biblically, it goes to whoever's feeding you the word. Deuteronomy, Nehemiah, over and over again, say, give this to the source that feeds you the word. You want to share something? I thought you were. No, I was just going to, because I know how I used to be when I didn't know this, and I wanted to take notes of, of the percentages and when. So the tithe is something that they do every paycheck, just to speak in right. layman's terms, and it's at least 10%. Mm -hmm. Right. And then the first fruits would be also every pay period or every paycheck, um, and that is paid directly to, so they would not write that out to their church per se. Correct. They would write it out to the the individual, whomever that may be. And then that percentage is, what did you say? 1.7 1. 1. to 2.5%. Okay. Yes, you. Yeah, I was just going to say for the people watching, and it's a whole nother line of teaching, but the tithe connects you to the local church. The first fruits connects you to the apostolic. It connects right. you to an apostle. When you when you when they brought that wave and they brought it to the priest, they brought it. Uh, and when you understand that, now that's a I don't want to create confusion here. That's another thing. But what Cameron is saying is so true in the fact that we. Uh, someone asked, do I have to tithe? Why would you not want to? Yes. You know, I mean, uh, when we got born again in the 80s and owed all that money, we settled that this is what we were going to do, and we've been doing it. In fact, let me just share this. I got, same time I got born again, a friend of mine got born again at the same time, and we started going to the same church, and he went back. He was in position. We were not. He went back and and it was like June when he got born again. And he heard about it. Well, he went back and paid his tithe. He caught his tithe up for that year. Yeah, yeah. And right. we watched him prosper. We watched his cattle prosper. He had favor on his on his job. Everything about it. You listen, it's it's not just that you can't outgive God. Let me read a scripture. I'll turn it back over to you, Dr. Miller. Deuteronomy eight eighteen. I can't remember if you quoted it while ago. But it says, and you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power to get wealth, 
Now, here's the here's what I want, excuse me, to focus on, that he may establish his covenant. Mm-hmm. Covenant people are that noble nobility. They're that upper class that people are looking for. We watch God take us and elevate us, release grace to us, and we watch things. And, and you know, when we bought the land, the ark, uh, Dwayne prophesied two or three times it's going to be. Someone's going to pay it off. That came to pass. We 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 paid that land off, and and as a matter of fact, one of the last times you were here with me yeah. on the air, mm-hmm. I said, "There's someone out there that's going to write a check and finish paying this thing off." And yes. right after that, it, it happened. When it happened, and a lady who saw me on YouTube wrote us an email, asked could she talk to Sue now on the phone. We did. I uh, she. She uh, was coming to Texas. That's where she lived overseas, coming to Texas where her father was. And she came to where I was preaching. And, I, and it was just a card about this big. I, and she said, here's a card for you and your wife. And when I opened it up, it was, it actually <laughs> was for more money than we owed wow. because we had paid some. So I contacted her. I said, well, this is for more. You know, I said, I'm happy to. Uh, you know, to give you, you can write another check. She said, uh, you're, you're going to use it for God, aren't you? And I said, yes. She said, keep it. Praise God. Well, in that same broadcast, Clay also prophesied that someone out there was going to write a check for five years worth of airtime for this ministry. Now, that had happened yet, so if that's you, yeah. if God's saying to you to write a check for five years of broadcast, uh, hey, we're waiting. So, obey that i just i laugh but i'm serious at the same time because he prophesied that so someone out there is being moved to do that listen deuteronomy eight eighteen that clay mentions i i took it and i broke it down in hebrew and this is not an exact translation because again it is almost impossible to put into english yeah but it is a paraphrase from the hebrew deuteronomy eight eighteen says take charge of all the possessions that the Lord your God has given you all your possessions. Happy Caldwell taught me long ago that the money that is in your possession does not belong to the Lord. It belongs to you. Mm-hmm. And I'll prove that to you. He can't get it unless you let go of it. That's right. It sounds spiritual to say, well, all of it's the Lord's anyway. No, it's not. It's yours. And the only way God gets it is for you to let go of it. And besides that, God doesn't need any of it in heaven. He can only use it here on earth. He says, for the Lord has given you the supernatural status of being his upper class upon the earth so that through your authority, wealth, ability, and strength, he can use your influence to establish his covenant kingdom upon the earth. The only shortage in the kingdom of God today to accomplishing preaching the gospel of the kingdom to the world is a financial shortage. There are enough ministries like these, like ours and others, uh, that we could get this job of preaching the gospel of the kingdom to the world done quickly. Yes. If we had the money. And I know super spiritual people can say, well, if God wants you to have it, he'll give it to you. Well, he'll give it to us through you. And uh, it, that's that's the key. You are the source. You want you want to share something? I wanted to tap into something that Apostle Clay said when you were talking about some believers, they don't think they should give or they don't want to be participants in the tithe. And I was brought back to a time where um, I was much younger and I had just started teaching school. And, of course, school teachers don't make a whole lot. That's true. Um, and I had a very close uh person in my life and we told each other just about everything Uh, she made double what I did she had a brand new car mine was an old car she questioned me as to why I never had an issue with my car I always made paid my bills this that and the other and she was always upside down to the point where she had insufficient checks quite often and yet she really didn't spend more than I did, and yet for some reason she couldn't figure it out. It just wouldn't work out. Her month, what is it? You've got more month than you do money. I think that's the phrase. 
And I simply told her, and I did not coin this phrase. I had heard it myself. I said, do, I asked her, I said, do you tithe sometimes? Well, then you don't. And so then she said, you know, I do when I can. And I said, okay, well, here's the one difference. I'm a, I, I cannot afford not to tithe. Well, amen to that. I said, you've got to get into your mindset that you can afford not to tithe. I said, just test it. I said, I'm living proof. I make half of what you do. I spend about the same you do. Our, our, our bills are about the same. Yet why is it I can make my month work out till I have a little bit left over and right. you can't? So, you know, she never did grab a hold of that. Wow. Wow. And well, never did prosper. That's the key. That's where it starts. We're going, and tomorrow we'll come back and get into the tithes, plural, in the Hebrew understanding. I want to remind you the Josiah Company is meeting at the Pentecostal Church of God campground in their beautiful facility there, uh, April the 20th through the 22nd. We have major apostolic leaders from around the nation that are going to be there, Dutch Sheets and others along with Apostle Nash, who's hosting the meeting. You must register at claynash.org. Don't wait. It's filling up. There's limited space. Uh, we want you to come and be a part of that Josiah Company. It is going to be an intense strategic meeting for our nation in the spirit realm. So don't miss that April the 20th through the 22nd. And uh, if you are free this Friday night, claynash.org, you can take Passover with us. You can celebrate Passover the Seder will begin at 7.30 Central Time. So keep those things in mind. Now, we're going to come back tomorrow. We're talking about the tithes, the first fruits, the offerings, how you can unlock increase in your life. It works. And if we're a blessing to you, will you be a blessing to us? You can go to DwayneMiller.com and sow into this broadcast and into this ministry. So God bless you and increase you, and we'll see you tomorrow on VTN. God bless.